The Cats have already assured themselves of the postseason. They are well rested after their bye. But this is Arizona week. And Arizona hasn't lost yet. No time to let up now. Protect this house. Nick Dunn, plenty of time, looking deep downfield. He's got it! Touchdown, Sabercats! It's time for Sabercats Weekly here on Comcast Sportsnet. I'm Chris Townsend. Well, all you need to say around here, it's Arizona Week. Very intense in the locker room. Coming up next, we'll get you ready for Friday night's game with the head coach, Darren Arbett. We'll also talk to offensive lineman Jeff Nady and defensive lineman Mark Scheichel. That's all coming up next right here on Sabercats Weekly. Sabercat fans, my name is Jennifer and this is my first year cheering for the Saber Kitten team. My favorite part of the game is being able to perform with such a great team and being able to interact with all of the fans once the game is over. Let's go Sabercats! The Saber Kitten of the Week has been brought to you by Norton by Symantec. Well now joining us on Sabercats Weekly, a man whose job is to get after the quarterback. Mark Scheichel joins us here on Sabercats Weekly. Thanks for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. So what's Arizona Week like coming out of a bye week? Oh, it's huge. I mean, you know, everybody kind of worries by week, you know, were you lackadaisical coming out, but you kind of see where the team is after that first practice. And I think after today, you know, everybody's ready. You know, we're going to we're going to be ready for them. A second by week. How big is that for the guys that may be a little bit dinged up, a little bit tired to have that second by week during a season? Oh, it's huge. I mean, just for little injuries, you know, the more you play on those little injuries, they always grow into bigger and bigger injuries. But the second by week, you know, you have time to rehab those little things. So they don't turn into major injuries so you can finish out the season healthy. Because it's one of those deals. We're at the point to where if you've played enough, you've got something wrong. Oh, yeah, of course. And that's always, as you mentioned, playing through that, it's just, it, it's tough. So a second bye week, I got to think it's just the breath of fresh air. Oh, yeah, it feels amazing on your body. You feel like almost like a new player coming back. So you got Nick Davila coming in. He's arguably the best quarterback in the Arena Football League. It's always tough to get to him. What is the key just at least to get some hands on him, let alone sack him? I mean, it's just all-around group effort, you know? DB's got to cover their man, we got to get there in time. You know, if DB's do a good job covering, but we don't get the beat the offensive linemen, you know, what they did is kind of just invalid, you know, if we don't do our job. And same works the opposite way, you know? If we do have a great rush, but they don't cover, then he gets the ball off right away, and what we did is invalid. So, you know, it, it takes both of us to do our jobs to get him down. Now, he's a left-handed quarterback. Normally, you face a right-handed quarterback. Do you prepare differently for a righty versus a lefty? I honestly don't. I mean, maybe our DBs do. I don't know. I'm not sure if they do. I don't think they worry too much about it either. But as far as I know, nobody I've talked to does. We just treat them like any other quarterback. And the one thing about what well, I always think about with a right-handed, left-handed quarterback is the righty's going to tend to roll right, yeah. lefty's going to tend to roll left. But when you look at Davila, a guy who has great feet, how tough is it on you guys for a quarterback who not only can beat you with his arms, but can also beat you with his legs? Oh, it's, it's tougher. You definitely, it's something you have to think about. You know, with quarterbacks, you know they're going to stay in the pocket. You know, you're free to do, you know, a little bit more things in there, like coming underneath the alignment or something, or maybe having a wider rush. With someone like him, you have to, you know, keep the pocket collapsed on him. You have to cover up all those escape routes on him. You can't, you can't leave any leeway for him to find an opening. So it's, it definitely takes a little more effort. But it's a different way you attack it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said, you know, it's just you got to make sure the D line is working together to collect the pocket around him. You can't have, you know, a gap here where the end and the nose kind of go wide apart from each other where you can step up and go through. Everybody has to, you know, do their job and stick to their job. You know, we talk about all the time how this game is not meant for defense. It's meant for offense, mm -hmm. right? It's all yeah. about the offense. Yep. You guys are playing almost with your, your arm tied behind your back. How proud have you been of your defense this year? At times, you guys, a lot of pressure has been put on you guys, and you guys have risen to the occasion. Oh, I'm really proud. You know, my first year in arena, you know, you know coming from the outdoor game, you know, they put up 40, 50-something points. First year, you're like, 
oh wow, that's kind of a lot. And other people are like, no, 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 that, that's, that's actually good for arena, you know. And then you, here, you know, we've been doing that consistently, you know, holding teams to really low points and, you know, our defense has been stepping up and, you know, I, I love it. I love being a part of it, you know. There's excitement with everybody, you know, everybody's close knit and it, it's just a good thing to be around. Before we let you go, if San Jose is going to beat Arizona on Friday night, what's the one thing that has to happen for the defense? Take care of the players they're supposed to take care of. You know, you look back at the other games we played against uh, Arizona, and you can count how many plays, you know, why we lost on one hand. You know, it just comes down to those few little plays where someone, you know, had the play but just barely missed it. Someone did something slightly wrong, you know. It's never as good as it seems, but it's never as bad as it seems. You know, we came back watching the film, and you're like, how did we lose this game? You know, and it just comes down to just really little things that we need to take care of. And if we do, we're going to beat them. Good luck on Friday night. Thank you. Wardrobe has been provided by Casera Clothers. <music> quarterback, no question, is the most demanding position in the Arena League. Coming up next, we'll do a little Quarterback 101 with the Sabercats quarterback, Russ McMahon. Well, in the Arena League, you can score from anywhere, but it's imperative that when you get into the red zone that you come away with the points, especially a touchdown. Absolutely. You know, when we get down in this area, the confines are so small. That, you know, all that precision we talk about in the open field is even more emphasized down here. We have to be even more precise. Uh, one of the big throws in this game you'll always see is we try and use every, every inch of the field. We'll use the back corner uh, a lot of the time because the DBs don't have anywhere to go. You know, they're going to play you nice and flat. And, they think down here we have a good opportunity to undercut balls and try and make interceptions. So one of the things that we have to be really good on is using every inch of the field. You know, uh, you'll see a lot of times we'll score touchdowns in that back corner sure. with the guy extending fully and hitting that wall. Guys going over the wall, yeah. yeah. You know, that's one of those things that makes me cringe, but, you know, sometimes we just have to do it. All right, let's see some throws. So what we're going to do here is we're going to show, uh, Jason's going to go show the top of that route here, and I'm going to just try and what I do is try and drop the ball in that corner. I wanted to, you know, like the, like you see guys throwing the ball in the bucket, right? That's, yeah. that's our practice. I, I'll come out here once a week with a, a bucket in these corners and just work on getting that ball up and down and dropping it in there. So, you know, we take a, a quick drop and that ball goes up and over right for that back corner. You know, he, Jason knows he's going to be make contact with that wall at some point and and hopefully we're able to hold on to it and, and get a touchdown. And throw it to where the defensive back can't get it. Exactly, that's exactly what. And, you know, his job, I always tell the receiver, it's his job to get to that spot. And it's my job to beat the DB with the throw. Coach Arbet talks about having big wide receivers such a key in this game. And I got to think, especially down, when we get down in the red zone, the bigger the guy, the easier it is they help, for you. But then, you know, you look at a guy like Reggie Gray. He does a great job of scoring touchdowns and. I don't think you could find one that's smaller than him, you know? So, it, so much of the game is, is, again, just being on the same page and understanding what you're trying to accomplish. Big bodies do help, that's for sure. And then another factor we have is, is the nets in the back of the end zone. You know, the outdoor game, guys don't experience that. You can, you can be high, you can take chances, and you can miss throws. You and the throw ball, it away. And the ball goes through the back of the end zone. Here, if you miss high, it's coming back on the field, and there's a good chance that the deep, someone on the defense or, or you know, someone's going to end up catching the ball, like we talked about. The balls that get tipped or, or, or bounce around don't make it to the ground very often. So in the red zone, you really have to pick and choose and be very careful how you do throw it away, because at times you do want to throw it away. Exactly, and that's part of the reason we like to use those back corners, because you know, the net doesn't extend all the way to them. So if you miss high, the ball typically goes off the field. Now, the Arena League is set up for a lot of scoring. That's very obvious. But it's not easy to play this position. Even though we see a lot of touchdown passes and we see games where Russ throws for eight TDs, it's not as, you guys, you guys make it look a lot easier than it really is. Well, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of effort. It's, it's a lot of uh, preparation. You know, not only about the other team, but also with your guys. You know, so much, like I keep saying, so much of the game is just being on the, right, the same page, having the timing, having all those things work together. So you saw me talk about dropping in the bucket and how to do it. You think, think that's something you're up for? So easy, are you kidding me? I've been watching arena football for years. I like it. Maybe we'll have to bring a garbage can out here and let you throw at no that soon too. No problem. Arena football is easy. Ready? Oh, he went and got it for you. Not bad. One for one. One for one. Hey, maybe that's where we should leave you. <laughs> we appreciate the time, man, always. Thank you. Thank you.
Now joining us here on Sabercats Weekly, offensive lineman Jeff Nady. Jeff, thank you for coming on the program. Thank you. Well, it's an intense week. It's Arizona week. What's this week like versus all the other weeks so far this season? Well, they're the two-time defending Arena Bowl champions these past two years, and uh, we just we know what it what it takes to beat them, and uh, we just have to have a good, you know, all three components. Offense, defense, and special teams all have to come together to beat this team. Uh, we got a lot of respect for them. If we do it right, we can come out on top. When you break down the film of the two losses, because you faced them twice, you lost twice. How tough is that to look at that going, man, we're so close. Could have beat them here, could have beat them there. I know it can't be easy. Exactly, and, and we beat ourselves in those games. We know that when we do everything correctly, you know, we get stops on defense and we finish in the end zone. So when we put all that together, good things happen. We know we're capable of it, and it's just putting it all together. They have a vicious pass rush, just like you do. The Sabercats have a terrific pass rush. What makes it so tough blocking for your quarterback against Arizona? You know, they just have great guys. All four of them up front, you know, know what they're doing. They're all veteran guys, and they're physical. And, and the way you beat a physical pass rush is you are physical up front as an offensive line. And that's what our plan is this week, going into Arizona. and. And that's what we're going to bring. And when you look at you at 6'7", 315 <laughs> pounds, you know, this game, the majority is pass blocking. How many times do you really just say, man, I wish I could run block against this guy and just, just own him and just crush him? Absolutely. Coming from Nevada, we were definitely a run first offense. So that's where I'm more comfortable. But uh, you always got to adjust to, to where you're at. You know, definitely you, you wish you could have a, a couple change ups where you just really get to go downhill at somebody. But, you know, that's that's this game. And, you know, I trust Coach O, whatever whatever he's calling, that's, that's the correct call. And, uh, you know, we go from there. So that's, you must love the goal line situations because you know Sabercats on the goal line are going to be running the football. That, yes, that we, we have a great goal line percentage. We, we get the ball in the end zone when we get into that red zone. So the run game in that red zone is, is a big part of our package. And uh, we, we go to it and we're effective with it. What would it mean to hand Arizona their first loss? They're 14-0 and this year. That's true. Um, it, it would mean a lot. We know that we're going to see this team in the playoffs, and we want to beat them now, and we want to beat them in the playoffs. So uh, beat them now would definitely help us blueprint how we're going to beat them in the playoffs. You know, you, you always are looking for wins, and, and this is just another bump in the road that, that we'll have to go over. Now, for you personally, you're a football guy. When it's all said and done, you're going to hang them up. You want to be a coach. Why do you want to stay in the game? Uh, I love the game. I love to compete. Um, you know, when I came in as a, as a freshman at Nevada, I was a 240-pound tight end, and uh, I trusted a coach and believed in, believed in him, and, and he turned me into a 305-pound offensive lineman, and I've, wait, I've, wait, had, wait, a, I've had a blast. You were 240 since. pounds? That's right, that's right. I played a tight end and defensive end. I never never played offensive line, so uh, I had a coach that, that trusted in me and believed in me, and I believed in his system, and, and he, he made me into what I am today, and, and I'm very thankful for that. And uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to carry that on to other youngsters. So do you ever go to Coach Arbet and say, hey, listen, I know I'm 315 pounds now, <laughs> but back in the day. Yeah, I'm about 325. You're, you're 325? Yeah, yeah, I've been climbing. Oh, they're not giving you the, the <laughs> that's, love. That's right. So do you ever go to coach and say, hey, I played tight end a little bit, so I think it's time, you know? Well, the offensive linemen do get the ball here quite a bit. Uh, Rich Wranglin's yeah, got yeah, a Rich, few lately. Rich Wranglin's been getting them, so I, I know my opportunity will come. I, I like to believe I still got some of that tight end blood in me, and uh, I can be effective with the rock. So hopefully, uh, you know, it'll, it'll come. My time will come. What kind of moves would you have at 325 versus when you were 240? Oh, I'm, I'm a long guy. You're definitely going to get a stiff arm. There's no doubt about that. I got to see this. Oh, man. I mean, at some point, oh. let, me, let me talk to Omar Smith. We got to get I'll, you I'll the meet, rock. I'll meet you in the end zone. <laughs> that's that where would I'll absolutely be fabulous. That's where I'll be. This Friday, taking on Arizona before you let you go, what do you think is the number one key to get this victory against Arizona? Uh, it's going to be the ball. No, no turnovers, and we have to create turnovers. I think that if we are in the, in the plus margin there in turnover ratio, that I think we'll get the victory. And who knows, just maybe you'll have the game-winning touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. We appreciate you stopping by Sabercats Weekly. Good luck on Friday. Thanks for having me. Now it's time to get behind the face mask. Hey, Sabercats, what is your pregame meal? My pregame meal is everything I can see. Uh, chicken Alfredo. I have to have pasta, some sort of pasta, the night before the game, and uh, Pedialyte. Tell them about my size. Meals don't come like I want them to come. So, I mean, I just eat anything that, that comes. Uh, not really. As long as I hydrate, get a Pedialyte, and a little bit of pasta, I'm good to go. Usually uh, chicken, vegetables, a salad, I eat pretty light before the games. 
My pre-grade meal would be chicken and pasta. Chicken fettuccine alfredo. Uh, pasta all day, chicken pasta. Cat's Questions has been brought to you by Norton by Symantec. The head coach and owner of the San Jose Sabercats joins us here on Sabercats Weekly. Darren Arbett, coach, how are you doing this week? It's Arizona week. Doing good, Chris. And this is a huge game on Friday. It's your third time you're playing Arizona. It's in your building. You've lost to them the two previous times. Tell us how practice has gone this week preparing for Arizona. It's going well. Like I said last time, it's a great opportunity for us. They're 14 and 0 now. It's a great opportunity to see where we're at. They've been the best team in this league for three years, and uh, I think this team's growing. When you go back and you look at the two games you previously lost to these guys, you got the week five loss. The final in this one was 57-51. Kerry Reed with the late touchdown in that one in San Jose. The second loss was one that really hurt because that's the game in week 12 where Russ Mickna went down with the broken collarbone. These two games have been pretty close. What do you see on tape? You know, it's always four or five plays that makes the difference. Our guys understand that. We need to make those plays. Arizona made those plays the first two games. What's different about your team now coming out of their second bye week, getting ready for this game on Friday night? This team is getting better and better every week. They're starting to play together. I've always said since uh, week three, they like each other. They're playing for each other. So I think the sky's the limit for us. What's the best thing about this team coming out of the bye? Would it be, I don't know, health, uh, as you kind of mentioned, chemistry? What's the best thing this bye has provided for your organization? A lot of things, Chris. It's interesting. A lot of the guys didn't go home. They went to each other's house and hung out. And, and I thought that brought them closer. And the other thing is rest. We got a lot of rest. They had a week off. They came back, they're fresh, and they're ready to go. You know, that's something people don't think about too often, but when, usually when guys have bye weeks, it's, hey, I'm out of here. I'm going to see the wife. I'm going to see the girlfriend. I'm, I'm going to do something. That's got to mean a lot to you that guys say, hey, this is still about business, and this is still about winning the uh, Arena Bowl. So I guess that, that's got to mean a lot to you. It does. It means a lot to these guys. It really does in this locker room. And to take a fellow teammate home, with you. When I heard that, I said, hey, it's going in the direction I want it to go. Nathan Stanley, how has he improved during the bye week, your young quarterback? I say it every week. I, told, I tell the team, I tell anyone who will listen, Nathan Stanley, this means a lot to him. And he works hard. And those are the kind of guys I follow. And the team's following him right now. And when you look at his mechanics, and you look at the footwork, and you look at the quick release, how much better is he getting for the arena game? The game's slowing down to him. He's starting to understand the game. So he's getting a lot better, Chris. You know, we talked to a lot of your players here inside this locker room, and each one of them thinks, you know what, I can help this young kid out. What have you talked to some of the players around him about helping him? I don't have to say anything. They're behind him 100%. I told them how I felt about him. They're behind him 100%, and you're right. They're trying to help him. They're doing everything they can so this team can win football games. When you look at beating Arizona, you haven't yet your own two. What do you think the key is to beating Arizona? Making those four or five plays, playing hard. As Kevin Guy say, your mindset wanted more than that next guy, and our team understands that. And being undefeated, ha has anything changed about them? What's better about them from the last time that you've seen them? They're 14 and 0. You know, everybody watched their tape and says, "Hey, let's do this, let's do that." And their quarterback is, you know, arguably the best player in this league right now. Their receivers, their offensive line is playing well. Their defensive line has had a lot of success against us. And their DBs do a great job against everyone. So right now, they're the team to beat. It's a great opportunity for us. Our guys understand that. But, Chris, it's not about any team in this league. It's about the team in this locker room. And we have to get our minds right, and we have to get ready to play football for four quarters. And your defense this year, there's been times where they've had their backs against the wall, and they've risen to the occasion. Talk about how good your defense has been this year in a game that's not set up for good defensive play. I like their mindset. They just come in every game, and they say, hey, doesn't matter what's going on in this game, special teams-wise or offense-wise, whatever decision the coaches make, we're going to play football. And that's all they do for four quarters. Whenever they get an opportunity to play football, they're playing football, and it's been great over the season so far. You mentioned Davila and how good he has been at quarterback. What is the key to getting to him or at least getting some touches on him? Guys are going to have to work hard and they're going to have to get to him. And it's tough because Arizona's a good football team.
But it's a great measuring stick for this team to see where we're at. Well, Coach, it's going to be a great one on Friday night at the SAP Center. I can't wait. Sabercats and Rattlers, good luck in this one. Hey, thanks. Well, it's going to be a hell of a game on Friday night at 7.30 at the SAP Center. Tickets are still available for the Sabercats and the Rattlers. Arizona's beaten San Jose twice, and this is San Jose's last chance to defeat the undefeated Arizona Rattlers who come into this game at 14-0. It's going to be a great game. We hope to see you there. And, of course, we'll have all the action for you next week here on Sabercats Weekly, and you can hear the game on KMBR 1050. We'll see you next time. Sabercats Weekly has been brought to you by Dr. Sharma South Bay Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, Casera Clothers, Norton by Symantec, and Fries.com.